Good afternoon, friends. Steve Embernoon with Israeli News Live. And uh, we just did a message recently here on Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse 17 here about not beware of men, but the shining ones and the sons of man. Wow, what an amazing discovery that was. And uh, then tonight I just felt, look, do a little word study and let's go take a, another peek at the Bible in the Hebrew Matthew here. And let's just see what else we might come up with. Uh, now, by the way, I did get some people that actually had made comments Oh, Steve, you should be looking at that at the Greek, not in the Hebrew, because it was written in Greek. No, it was not written in Greek. Uh, and although the Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew is not an original either, neither do we have any Greek manuscript that is an original. In fact, the oldest Greek manuscripts we have are only from around 400 uh, uh, CE in the Common Era. Or, or AD, whichever one you want to use there. So nothing that we have is originals. But for the sake, though, for those of you that think that it was Greek that it should be written in, let me bring to you to the attention uh, of several of the church fathers and what they actually wrote. Uh, Papias, going back to 130 AD, said Matthew wrote the oracles in the Hebrew language and every one interpreted them as he was able. That's interesting. That's from Eusebius' church history. Inter Notice how he said everyone interpreted them as he was able. In other words, Matthew was writing some things that were pretty tough to deal with. Arrhenius notes here, Matthew also issued a written gospel among the Hebrews in their own dialect. Uh, Origen in 200 AD wrote the first was written by Matthew, who was one, uh, once a publican, but afterwards an apostle of Jesus Christ. And it was prepared for the converts from Judaism and published in the Hebrew language. Eusebius notes in 315 AD for Matthew at, fir at first preached to the Hebrews when he was about to go to, uh, to oh, I, God, I didn't put the rest of that one in there. It's actually on a different page here. But he also knows Eusebius notes as well that Matthew wrote in the Hebrew language. All right, he was the only apostle that actually wrote in the Hebrew language. Although Paul did speak to his uh, to the to the to the Jews in the Hebrew language, as we read in the book of Acts, and there are several other passages that speak about the Hebrew language in the book of uh, or in the New Testament as well. Four places in all. But Matthew, as noted by the church fathers, uh, clearly wrote his gospel in the Hebrew language. So when we look at the, when we're looking over here at the Hebrew language and Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew, don't be surprised if we get some very interesting insights as a result of that. Even after what we read with the one church father uh, that wrote, some of the things that he wrote were very hard, basically very difficult to, to, to believe, to understand, to interpret, to, to really get a grasp of, especially in light of what's being... Let me just take you back to that just for a moment here, right? What, what was it here? Matt, that was Papias in 130 AD. Not, I mean, he was. that was written at a time that uh, you know, he could have been alive when Matthew was here. He said, Matthew wrote the oracles in the Hebrew language and everyone interpreted them as he was able. In other words, it was difficult. He, had, he wrote some things that was hard to understand, hard to grasp, hard to believe, right? Well, in the case that we had here in what he says in the... Uh, Chapter 10, verse 17, be, would not beware of men, but rather, Hazahahu bivene adam, the shining ones in the sons of men. That would be something that would be very difficult to interpret. How do you deal with that? Especially, what if, what if they're not aware of that? What if they're not aware of fallen angels among them? You know, demons, devils, aliens, whatever you want to call them, right? That was a difficult thing. 
Notice what it says, though, and, and we're going to, and the reason why I'm going back to this is because I'm about to share with you another passage that I found in the book of Matthew, again, the Hebrew Matthew, where again he says the same thing, but in a different context. Behold, I send you like sheep in the midst of wolves, be as crafty as serpents and humble as doves. Notice that wording right there, be as crafty as serpents. For the shining ones and the sons of man, they will not deliver you up to the congregation of the houses of assembly, but to governors and kings, and you will be able to bear witness on my behalf to them and to the Gentiles. Why would they deliver you up to these governments in the first place? Because they control the governments. When they seize you, do not consider what you will say because the, in that hour that you are in need, an answer will come to you. Right? But notice also, brother, verse 21, brother will deliver up brother to death and father his son. The sons will rise up against his fathers and lead them unto death. You will become a derision and a fright to the nations because of my name. They, they deliver you un, up unto death. I told you, it reminds me of the day we're living in now. Won't even mention about the, you know, the thing they put there right there. You know, won't even mention that, right? Because I want this to be there on our YouTube channel for everybody to be able to see this. But I have to share with you something that I have found. Let me just, I got, I got scriptures going both ways. Let me see what I have over here. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I have that one there. I, I got to share this one with you before I go to the other one. And, and mainly because of the scripture that we have there where he says, be as crafty as serpents and humble as doves, right? Well, isn't it interesting that when we look at Matthew 23, chapter 23, verse 24, Offspring of blind leaders who are strict in the matter of the net and swallow the camel. Literally, it says in the Hebrew, Zara, Zara manahagim ha'olin, seed of blind leaders. Do you realize what that means when it says that they are the seed of blind leaders? Well, if you go down to verse 33, they are serpents, seed of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not turn in repentance? But they are the seed of the blind leaders. Now, you could take that is just meaning the fact that the leaders of that day had no ability to, to, to see the word of God. And that's true, no doubt about it. But we could also go a step further because do you realize what Satan's name was called in many of the ancient documents that at one time were considered part of scripture? He was called Samael the God of the blind. Yeah. Satan was considered to be a blind God. So it's no wonder why they are considered the Zara. See? The seed of Ha'orim, the blind. They're the seed of the blind. Literally, from the leaders of the blind. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Throw that your way. Now, it's not going to be a very long message here, but uh, 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 this is this is the one that really got me, right? And by the way, there is another word for beware uh, in the Hebrew Matthew, but it does not use zohar for the word for 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 beware. So I just find it's fun and interesting, right? So it's still the shining. The shining, literally the shining ones, because it's pluralized, in my opinion, it would be the shining ones. So, Hazohahu, Bevene Adom. All right, where are we at here? Are we in, still in chapter 10? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the wrong, I'm still in the wrong chapter. My apology here. 
All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now we, this is going to get exciting here. We are now in, what is it? Chapter, I believe we're in chapter seven, I believe it is. Okay. And you can, you can just look this up in the, um, in the New Testament there. You'll be able to find it with no problem. And, and I'm, I was just looking down to see, no, I don't have any of my windows open anymore. So I can't pull it up that way. I think we're in chapter seven of Matthew. And what do we have here in verse 15? And Jesus says here, and again, he said to them, beware of false prophets who come to you in wool clothing like sheep, but inside are tearing wolves. By their deeds, you will know them. Does a man gather grapes from thorns or figs from briars? Every good tree makes good fruit and every bad tree makes bad fruit. The good tree cannot make bad fruit, nor can a bad tree make good fruit. Now think about that, right? Think seriously. Well, you already said because I have it written on the screen. I keep forgetting I wrote it on the screen, right? But there it is again, right? Hazahahu. The shining ones. But this time, it's not in the sons of man. It's man. Nave, navi, menavi. Literally, the, the, the mem there would be from. So in this case, and navi being the prophets plural, I would have to translate it more like from among the prophets. But it gives that extra little word, hashakir, the lying prophets. So if you were to translate it, then it'd be the shining ones from among the lying prophets. Who come, that really should be the way they translate it. Jesus actually would have said, the, the shining ones from among the lying prophets who come to you in wolves and clothing like sheep, but inside are tearing wolves or ravaging wolves. By their deeds you will know them. Then he says, does a man gather grapes from thorns or figs from briars? No, you don't. You get figs from a fig tree and there ain't no thorns in that fig tree. And when you want grapes, you get grapes from a grapevine and there are no thorns in that grapevine. But there were some fallen angels or Nephilim or whatever you want to call them. Jesus was calling them the shining ones. And in one scripture we have in Matthew chapter 10, they were in the sons of Adam. Or we would say the sons of man. This time we find the shining ones from among the lying prophets. I find it interesting that he called those prophets liars. Isn't it interesting that they're, 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 they're leaders? They are, in fact, speaking of leaders, isn't that what we had in the other passage there? Um, well, in the case of offspring of blind leaders, Seed of blind leaders. Uh, that's Matthew chapter 23, chapter 10. We have the shining ones in the sons of man. And then we find that Jesus says there that the shining ones from among the lying prophets. So these fallen demons, these devils, or as we would say today, aliens, were even amongst the prophets. Not just, not just in amongst Pharisees and Sadducees, but even amongst the prophets. There were liars. What's interesting, though, is that we always find 
a mingled race. Remember how the scripture says, as James and Jambers withstood Moses, the scripture says this, so were these of reprobate minds concerning the truth. From such, turn away. I am amazed at how much is revealed when we begin to look at original languages. And that's another thing, too. Sometimes people will say, I can't believe you're changing the word of God. And you're, no, no, we're not changing the word of God. Now, granted, just like in the English language, we are examining the original language that this was written in, but we don't know for sure how accurate this is because we have copies of copies of copies. And although this was preserved by the Jewish people to be able to, to, to debate Christians, I highly doubt they're going to, to want to uh, uh, make the Pharisees look any worse than they already are. So if anything, the English version really begins to corrupt what was written originally. And maybe they didn't realize what they were doing when they had on their Zohar. The Zohar is very easy to know, though. The Zohar is the shining. They know what it means. But something slipped through the cracks. It was for our, our sake, so that we would know the truth. You know, we don't always get that pleasure of knowing that type of truth. Oh, I did have it here. What do you know? All right, where were we at then? Let me let me back up there to the, where that one was and so I can make sure that we were in chapter 7 because I want to make sure that that's where that was. So when you're trying to look this up for yourself, we will know for sure. Chapter 7, verse 15. Again, is it, yes, it's, it was chapter 7. There it is right there. All right, so it was chapter 7. I'm glad we got that right. That way, don't mess anything up for you guys. Anyway, listen, your support of this ministry is greatly appreciated and greatly needed. Um, not many people like what we do. And so we do appreciate when you stand up for this ministry and support this ministry. Uh, it's been a while since we've been able to, to, to thank people for their love and kindness uh, my wife has started uh, doing that once again. So hopefully, uh, if you have been a, a contributor to this ministry, you will soon uh, get a correspondence from us thanking you for your kindness in helping us uh, to continue the work that we do. Uh, you can donate online just by clicking right there or by mail to Noon Institute or Stephen Benoon at uh, P.O. Box 156. Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Right there above the video there, you should be able to see the address here. We appreciate that. Uh, if you have not seen this message here, don't do it. You definitely want to want to watch that message there. Um, we'll just say Mr. Marble. We won't say the, the whole thing. I'm sure the picture kind of gives you an idea of what he does. There's also another uh, amazing individual. Let me... Uh, See if I can't just quickly, um, let's see here. Yeah, this one right here as well. Another amazing friend of ours there. We will just call him Mr. Thorpe. Uh, he actually spoke before Congress before. And uh, amazing, amazing uh, man, amazing interview there. These are new faces there standing up for the truth blood on their hands. Definitely check out these two. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a blessing for you. And we thank you for your support of this ministry and the work we're doing here. God bless you. And uh, be watching. We have more of these type of individuals that Yana will be interviewing. And uh, so you're going to be getting more witnesses that are standing for the truth. Uh, so anyway, God bless you. Thank you for